What's up y'all? I'm Chris and today I'm going to be opening up a new tool. It is a plasma cutter. My goal is to eventually turn this into a CNC plasma cutter. Now along that journey is going to be a lot of effort but I think I've got the right tool for the job. I wasn't able to find exact specifics about this model or a lot of reviews about this exact model online but I was able to find a lot of reviews about other products by this same company. And so I feel like I do have a good product. If you do look at their webpage, it even talks about using this as a DIY person. Um, it also talks about using this with a CNC machine. That's why I think I really did get a really good buy and hopefully a really good tool for the price. Um, again, only time will tell, but like I said, I really want to turn this machine into a fully working CNC machine. All right, y'all, let's talk about what comes in the box. I don't even know other than what I've read on the website since I haven't been able to find basically anything online about this exact model. So first things first, I'm really excited to see that this does come with a 220 plug on it. Um, I was a little bit worried that I would have to buy an entire new uh, cord for this since some of the other models online you do have to actually go out, buy your own cord and install it. However, I do not have the L630P in my shop, so I will have to take this actual plug off and exchange it for a different plug. All right, so now that I have all this stuff set out, uh, the next thing I need to do is a quick run to get a new connector and then I'll be able to fire this up and do some test cuts and show you guys what this can do. All right, so I've gotten everything together that I need to. I've gone through and read through the whole user's manual, which ended up being a good thing. Um, on the plug, it's a 30 amp plug. However, in the manual, it does say that it requires a 60 amp breaker. So I'm glad I read that. I also went a different route. Um, instead of changing the plug out, uh, I just went ahead and just ran an entire new breaker for this. Uh, that way I didn't have to change the plug on their machine, potentially void a warranty, anything like that. Um, and then made an extension cable from the panel. So that is ready to go. So now we're gonna connect everything else and then fire this up and do a first cut with it, see what it does. Okay, so that was a little weird. When I first plugged it in, uh, I guess this top part had been unscrewed really far, so it was just leaking a lot. Um, so that's been fixed. On the front here, you do have uh, the pressure readout. And there is a nice feature on this where you pull it up to adjust it, and then you push it down, and it kind of locks in place. That way it doesn't go anywhere, hopefully, while you're actually cutting. part than the machine's part. 
Uh, and then there was this slag bit that was on the bottom that I just tapped it with the hammer. It popped right off and actually made it for a pretty clean cut. All in all, I gotta say that I do really like this machine. However, there are a couple of things that I thought would be really good to talk about here. As I mentioned earlier, when I purchased this plasma cutter originally, on their website, it talked about being CNC ready, talked about being great for the DIYer, those types of things. However, as I started looking at the machine more with one of my friends, we realized there's not a good, easy way to actually connect a computer to this CNC. So because of that, I sent an email to the company, which they were fantastic at responding back to me very quickly. And they said, yeah, we thought it was going to be a little bit easier to connect to a CNC than it is. So we're saying that it's not really that great for CNC anymore and that I should buy the upgraded model, the 60D. Um, I didn't have that in my budget. So I asked them if there was any way to convert this to be able to be CNC ready. They were really helpful and sent me a couple of pictures and showed what pins needed to be shorted. It's pins three and five. It looks relatively simple. So uh, hopefully later you'll see me modifying this, probably gonna be putting in a relay. That way I can still use the trigger anytime I want to by hand, but at the same time, it will allow me to trigger it with a computer. So all in all, a little bit disappointed with that, but their customer service was great and they did try to help me out. So I am really excited to see how the Lotus 5500D will work for me. And in a couple of months, I'll probably do another video just to talk about it more and see what I like or dislike at that point. But all in all, I hope this was a useful video and thank you so much for watching.